Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, then I have some fun videos for you. You guys, oh my goodness. Okay, I was planning on doing my part one and part two of the kind of autumn, winter 2024 fashion month roundup today. And then yesterday, so this is Monday, this is coming out on a Wednesday, I'm filming on a Tuesday. Yesterday, we got blessed. We got blessed by the row. They gave us the most gorgeous, oh my goodness. And I know I'm a stan. Okay, guys, if you can't already tell by my entire channel, I'm a the row stan collector. And when I tell you, I thought that those collection images were so stu- I, I thought that they were stunning. I was, I was like, truly smitten. And so I said, scratch that. We're doing an entire video just on the row. I'm going to go over fall 2024 and winter 2024 in today's video. But first and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put up videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Yay. Okay. So you guys, ah. Oh. I was just totally like, I, I was actually very, very excited. I know, controversial. <laughs> Let's just start off with some controversy, shall we? I was actually so excited that the row kind of banned iPhones from their show. It just like, it really feels like they, they're just, they're just so them. They, as in the entire company and Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, the owners, creative directors, designers, just incredible human beings that they are. Again, clearly I am a full blown stan over here. It really felt like they were just like, no, we're gonna be us. We are going to be us. Their, their runway shows have always been notorious for like, they don't stream them, they don't have them on their own channel, they don't really publish their own videos yet thus far of their runway shows, and they don't really post a whole lot on Instagram, they really just post the collection photos, they're not posting, you know, every single day details, their Instagram is very me. If you guys know my own personal Instagram, different from my business Instagram, Layla Sophia Jewelry and Layla Sophia, my own personal Instagram is very similar. It's curated. It's a lot of kind of inspo behind my own brand. And so maybe I just resonate with that. I love the fact that the Rose Instagram is really just kind of like a mood board. And then of course they do have these gorgeous high res curated images as well from their shows, but it just, the whole thing, having no social media was so them because I don't think they have their own social media. Maybe they have little secret accounts that they use, but I kind of don't even think that. And I loved it. I loved it. It really, really, really took them back to them. As in the row, the row being very the row, making sure that it wasn't a hoopla. They kind of took the reins back. And what I was hoping for, I honestly, I was almost crossing my fingers that this would be the year that they dropped a curated, perfectly edited video of their runway show on like a new channel that they had. I, you know, I, a, a girl can dream, but this was just as good. I was assuming that because they had no photography inside, no social media inside, no iPhones, no nothing allowed inside, I was assuming something was coming. And this honestly, like the collection photos, they were moody. They were so, so, so stunning. I guess clearly we're starting out with winter 2024. So let's go over that first. And just to give my own little disclaimer in my part one, which is coming up in my next video, in my part one, you could just bear with me because of my kind of fashion roundup, I do always, I just have to say this and I posted something on Instagram about this. Those of you guys who follow me, you already know this, but I always have to champion for people with larger bodies, including myself, especially myself, maybe me, I know me. And sadly, even though I'm such a lover of the row, so far I have only been able to collect the bags. Definitely a pair of shoes is coming, but I sadly don't fit into the row, into Bottega Veneta, my two favorite brands. I can't just go out and buy a jacket from Celine or from Prada anywhere. And so I just always have to say, I really, really, really hope one day that especially the row, just because I would buy into that kind of immediately. I really hope that designers start to be more inclusive with their sizing. And who knows? I don't know the sizing of the collection yet, but you know, going based off of what we already know, I don't think that the row is making sizes like US 20 and 22 for women's, which is more so what I am. Body's like 18 different sizes. It's very confusing, but I love to wear things oversized anyway. So I average about a US 20 or 22, especially in my bottom half. And so until the day comes when the row can say, we have a triple XL for you, Sophia, I will be at the store immediately buying it, but I always just have to champion because 
I will talk about the clothes a little bit, but sadly, a lot of people, like myself, myself included, and so many different people, all genders, I think really, like, it's just, it's so sad to me that we can't collect, like, luxury or designer or whatever level clothing from most places, and that, yeah, that needs to change very soon. But that being said, I don't hold it against them simply because I love the pieces so much, and I just, like, it is my only gripe with them, my only gripe with any house, and they're not alone, certainly, so I can't exactly single them out. The clothing that I did see was stunning, and I'm gonna give you kind of my overall vibe because I, again, wrote this in an Instagram story post because it just, it again, I just have to say, I think that this entire runway show felt like like, I, I imagine this, like, pulling back into themselves, making sure that they know who they are, making sure that they know, that the public knows that they will never change, that the row will always be the row. And I know I've said that a thousand times, but that's kind of what I keep hearing in my head. And especially with all of this hype that has been around them, which I, I have many videos on my channel with, it now has started to just fully bother me anytime somebody rolls their eyes at the term quiet luxury because so many of those people are rolling their eyes at the term quiet luxury and then saying in the next video, oh, I'm just going into a quieter place in my collecting. Like, it's just, it's okay to say that you like quiet luxury. I think so many people lump in quiet luxury with the old money aesthetic, which yes, that I think is more so eye roll worthy, especially being someone who grew up in between Westchester and Connecticut and Manhattan. I know, I know, it's very, uh, how do we say this? It is, it is literally where the old money aesthetic kind of lives and resides, so I'm very familiar with the old money aesthetic, and I think Succession, the like, the success, haha, the success of Succession brought in the old money aesthetic while Quiet Luxury was already kind of going up and up and up as a moment, as a vibe that so many designers have really been loving and creating pieces around. And those two things kind of merged at a certain point, and now it just bothers the bejesus out of me, quite frankly, because I'm like, guys, two totally different things. So anyways, in this whole world where Quiet Luxury, no eye roll, has been absolutely, not just having a moment, it just is a beautiful way of dressing, in my humble opinion, even though I don't dress my clothing style, I don't think, in, in, in a quiet luxury way. Certainly, I'm sure a lot of people would categorize my bags as quiet luxury, I'm sure, being in that they're just very, very high quality, high materials, luxury level, and not a whole lot of branding. I guess that's what a lot of people say, but the branding part of it doesn't really matter as much to me. It's more so the quality and so that this can be like a lifelong, not just my life, like I can have materials and items that I pass down, hopefully. And I've done the same with my jewelry collecting in the past. I hope to do the same with my own line, Layla Sophia Jewelry. Okay, that was a really big rant in there. We're two rants in already to this one singular video. But all of that is to say, with all of this kind of like, us around the row, they also have had this, like what I would imagine to be a major successful year this year, especially with bags like the Half Moon bag, with bags like the 90s bag, and of course the now like completely infamous Margot bag, which I don't know why anybody would ever have something negative to say about that, but that's a whole different story for another day. The Margot bag has gotten quite frankly, the, the praise that I think it always should have been getting, and we know how much I love it. We know how much I love all of the bags from the row, and I loved the fact that Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen and the entire team, and whoever, you know, the creative team behind putting this show together, like, I think only three of the images had bags, and you could barely see them. All the images up until the last image, it was about the clothes, and that's what I loved. I looked at the first few images and I was like, they've done it again, they've done it again. I think that they love to kind of play with people, they love to play with us, i.e. when Gwyneth Paltrow was getting like all this weird kind of like attention, her courthouse looks while she was on trial, I don't know how to correctly say that, but she was getting all this like buzz that, oh, she's wearing the row, she's wearing quiet luxury to court, and then like that same week or the next day or whatever, Mary-Kate Olsen was like, I'm gonna have this like, busted out of cool vintage tea and like more color than a lot of the row looks are known for or, the, or not really but like what people attribute a very the row look to be and a beaten up vintage louis bag like i think that there are subtle ways that they kind of do a little you know f you to people which i kind of love and this entire show to me 
was very much so that they said, y'all have only been buying our bags. I just want to let you know that our clothing is where we started. They didn't start with bags until I think like three years into their designing, into their releasing of items. Bags, you know, took a little bit longer to come on the scene, rightfully so, because I have no idea what would come into actually producing these, like especially this level quality of pieces. So long story short, I just think it was brilliant. And I think the whole thing again was very very much so uh, we're coming back to us. We're coming back to ourselves. We're coming back to our bread and butter, what we do best. And I loved some of the notes that people had instead of allowing phones, camera phones, provided all the attendees with a notepad. And some of the notepads I thought were brilliant. There was a whimsy to it, but there was something just so utterly authentic to it as well. I have to say, oh my God. What color is this? I kind of think of like squash. Actually, it's very similar, not in satin, but it's almost similar to this or acorn like that. Oh my God. This is like my favorite style of piece that they do, like a draped knitted piece in this like stunning autumnal color that I said, holy camoli. This is one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever seen. That gorgeous, very Ise Miyake kind of pleated. I think it's a kimono or a jacket or something kind of over top. It looks like silken or satin or something. I clearly am a jewelry designer. I don't know anything about clothing materials really at all. It's rudimentary, so it's embarrassing, but it looks gorgeous. And obviously it is such a beautiful nod, I think, to Ise Miyake. And again, my favorite creator said this as well. The row has never been shy of saying, of course, we have inspirations. <laughs> like we have people who have come before us that we are so inspired by. I think namely Yoji Yamamoto, of course, Issa Miyake, Vintage Hermes. I'm sure there's a little Jill Sander in there. There are so many designers that they've attributed very clearly a lot of their kind of design inspirations to. And this I think was like chef's kiss so, 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 so stunning. Just overall, I thought the entire collection was so gorgeous, but I really think the fun part, and I really think that the really incredible part came with truly showcasing the clothing, truly showcasing the clothing the way they want to showcase the clothing, not with, you know, kind of grainy under angle iPhone shots. The row is really known for because there's not a lot of their own social media out there, it's kind of attendees. Videos has been really the past thing of what we know the shows to be, which I have always loved, quite frankly, but I love it in their own voice. I love that it's shadowy. I love that it's dark. I love that you can't really see what's happening, that it's like the best things come to those who wait, and that I truly think like could not be more true, I know, redundant, sorry, of the row in general. And now onto our bread and butter, which I do know more about, oh, <laughs> again, probably very rudimentary level. You know, we're getting there, but let's go ahead because we're a bag channel here, bag and fine jewelry. Let's go ahead and get into some of the bags from fall 2024 that released maybe even over a month ago that I haven't exactly gotten into. I was saving it for this exact week of videos going over the fashion week, February 2024, showcasing all of the autumn winter collections 2024. And let's just go ahead and start with image number one. If you guys don't know, on the Row website, they have an entire tab called Collections, where you can see most of the most recent, like maybe the last two years of collections and images, and some of them have more details, and some of them are purely just images. So that's just for reference if anybody is curious, but from the first look, there is a new style bag. And of course, I'm all over it, called the Edith bag. <laughs> We know how much I love my Papillons from Vintage Louis. I have two sizes. I have a small and then I have the regular 30. This is just the rowified version. It is so cute. I love the little handles on it and it almost looks to me like there is like a slight flattening out at the bottom, which I actually think would be really, really smart. It's so fun because it's clearly bigger than the 90s bag, which I still want. Yes, I definitely still have that on top of my list. There's something that could go very casual about it, but there's something also that could lean very dressy about it. And that I think is kind of like where the rose bread and butter is. Oh, and speak of 90s, oh my goodness. I'm like, do I need this or do I need the original 90s bag? Because there's a round 90s bag. 
Mic drop. Mic drop. It has the cutest little handle. It looks like it almost tapers. I can't exactly tell, but it comes in very similarly to the original 90s bag, kind of on the side, but it looks like there's some hardware there. Oh my goodness. It's so, so, so cute. Again, I wonder if there is some Papillon inspo there with the different sizes of Papillons, but this one, like, oh my goodness, that would be so cute. I could imagine this on like so many creators that I know and love and like any single outfit that they wear, this would be perfect. In look number four, it looks like a slouchy, as if the Margot isn't slouchy enough, but it looks like we might be getting a zipper Margot, which I don't know, that could be pretty amazing. The only, like the only gripe, the only issue I've ever heard anybody say about their Margot bag is that it's open. And so hello solution, if this is true, anybody help me out here it looks like that could be a zipper on the top i'm not exactly sure so don't cover me if it's not but if there is a zipper margo like kind of game changer over here oh my goodness and then i just have to say another mic drop moment because this one ooh, can i pick a favorite sure this one is my favorite the mini devon is gonna be so stunning because I actually love the Devon bag. And again, I am not a big bag girl because at this moment in my life, this very moment, hopefully that will change at some point. You know, I'm a single person. I just have my dog, I have my business and I really like kind of just need medium to small bags for all my little errands and jewelry work that I do. And so I've loved the Devon bag, just haven't had a need for it. And the only thing with the bigger size of the Devon bag is that it's like, it's the coolest shape I've ever seen on a bag, but where the handles are, only because where the handles are placed, it can get a little, it like almost the top slouches in in a not natural way when the bag is really, really full, I think, something like that. And I think they realized that. And the mini Devon is the answer because it's just gonna be a lot more structured. Bags that are that small don't really have that much slouch to them naturally, especially they're the masters. They are the masters from owning nine bags from the row. I can tell you, they know what bag to pair with what style. It is, I, it is so far beyond my like level of comprehension. It's genius. And so they'll pick the perfect leather for this bag. And like, I might be needing this. It's so cute. It is, it's probably only about this big, but the little handles, the fact that it's a a small structured bag, a small kind of stiffer bag, maybe, I don't know, but it kind of looks like that on the model. Like this might be their mic drop moment of this entire season. And by the way, there is also a Devon clutch, which looks so, so, so cool, which I've been talking a lot about like really cool kind of pochette clutch vibes. I love their toiletry cases. There are two that I'm like, do I need to buy this as an actual bag? I love just the simple one. It's There's two snaps on it. That one is one of my favorite bags. Like, I don't know why I don't have that one. We might have to think about that. And then also just their toiletry cases are kind of so beautiful. They're so simple. And so the Devon clutch is kind of like a vibe like that, but we know they do evening clutches so well. They've been doing them so beautifully since their very first bag collection, 2011 and 2012. And so that's just like, it's very, very them, but with that really cool, would that be a trapezoidal top shape? It also looks like there's a clutch bag with a little bit of hardware, which looks beautiful because we know I have some weird, which honestly, it now all of a sudden makes a lot of sense to me. Has anybody else figured that out before I am? Because I'm jewelry and bags. I love it when bags have some hardware to them, some really beautiful jewelry-like hardware to them. There's a pouch called the Amazon pouch that looks like, again, I can't see it fully, but it looks like it has just a little gold clasp. That is gonna be stunning. And I just have to end this with not a bag, but just a style in general, because I talked about this in my Valentine's Day video. And like, I don't even think that they would fit my arms, but I'm obsessed now with their gloves. And I now want a pair of gloves from the row because how freaking gorgeous and stunning. And I love the way that they've been styled and in the row shows and in the row images. And so many stylists and people and people in general have just been creating those amazing looks with gloves like tucked over a belt or tucked over a bag and now I want a pair of gloves. It's about to be spring so next year maybe I need to find like plus size but actual leather gloves because I'm so absolutely obsessed. There's an amazing, oh my gosh I've talked about her now so many times. There's an amazing stylist named Monique and like pfft, every single day. And again, we're very, we're just very, very aligned. It's like she's Bottega Veneta and the row pretty much and it's very like muddled colors, really, really cool. We were right here with each other. And she styled a few outfits with those like gorgeous gloves from the row. And I was like, oh my God, 
Now I want a pair and they're heavily featured in this collection. It's just, whew, it's just gonna live rent free in my brain. You guys, that has been my very chaotic, not very structured <laughs> review of the Row Fall 2024 and also Winter 2024. You guys know I will be all over and thank goodness I'm so blessed that I have the Row store in my city in New York. And so I will absolutely be going and hopefully showing you guys anything that I can. And yeah, let's all place bets by what bag maybe I'll be getting from those collections. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. And as always, I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye guys.